Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is John Barrera, and I'm the president and also a board member of the Society of Product Safety Professionals, SPSP. I'd like to welcome you today to the SPSP webinar series, and thank you for your support and for attending today. I'd also like to thank SPSP's exclusive webinar program sponsor, Stericycle, for their support. Stericycle has really been a critical part of our webinar series. We feel the webinar series is so important because it really helps us explore various topics of interest in the product safety field for the product safety community and professional. Today's webinar provides an opportunity to learn about a new professional certification program in the product safety field. This new program, the Certified Product Safety Professional Program, it was conceived back in 2016 by a small group of class members attending the Product Safety Management Program through ADK and St. Louis University. They offer the Advanced Product Safety Management course and a couple of others as well. So it's certainly something to consider to further your product safety education if you have not already done so. The group felt that the certificate programs are excellent, but they also wanted and they knew it was important to see expanded opportunities for professional growth, education, and leadership in the product safety field. But how, how would we do this? What comes next? Well, over a year's worth of meetings, research, and strategizing, the idea led to the creation of two new organizations that paved the way for this purpose. Those two organizations being the Society of Product Safety Professionals and Consumer Product Safety Certification Services. SPSP and Stericycle are pleased to present this webinar today, which will give an overview of this new professional certification program. You'll hear information about the administration of the program, as well as information about what it's like to attend the program from two actual members of the first graduating class of Certified Product Safety Professionals. Our speakers today are Al Kaufman, the Chairman of Board of Governors for CPSCS, Consumer Product Safety Certification Services, Beth Ann Yakubu, Executive Director of the Emerson Leadership Institute at St. Louis University, SLU, and Alan Beth Ann will give a history and overview of the certification process, then you'll also hear from Melissa Karens from 3M and Sheila Gottschalk from Hallmark, both now certified product safety professionals and members of the inaugural class. They'll share their insights and experiences from the program. There'll be a time for questions at the end as well. We'd like you to leave the webinar with a full understanding of this professional certification program. With that said, I'd like to turn it over to Al Kaufman to begin the presentation. Al? Thanks, John, <clears throat> and good morning or good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for joining. Uh, we appreciate you making the time to, uh, to join us uh, for this um, webinar on uh, consumer product safety uh, professional certification. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about um, CPSCS, the Consumer Product Safety Certification Services, um, how it came about, what it is, and what it does. Um, the history, the original intent, as John uh, alluded to, was to have um, one organization, SPSP, that would administer the uh, certification program and um, would um, uh, you know, be able to monitor that all within one organization. But we felt after we got into it, um, first of all, it, um, it quickly became apparent that the product, consumer product safety professional field was uh, small enough that the, the considerable costs of developing a traditional certification program were, were probably beyond the reach of an organization like SPSP. And it also would make um, the costs of uh, individuals who wanted to become certified, um, you know, be, be you know, what we felt was unreasonably large. Uh, so what we did was we also, as a, at about the same time, we found out that uh, IRS rulings had said that organizations that provide a, um, provide a certification service it cannot be registered as a 501c3. In other words, a, um, uh, under the IRS um, uh, tax code, uh, that would be an organization that can accept um, donations and uh, they would be tax deductible, which was a concern for us. So at that time, we set up CPSCS to uh, maintain the, um, the product safety uh, certification program. 
and set it up as a 501c6, which is entitled to do that. Now, CPSCS cannot uh, receive tax deductible contributions. So what we do is we simply bill uh, SPSP for the services we provide. Um, although most of what we do is is um, uh, is uncompensated, it's 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 on a volunteer basis. So uh, the board consists of myself, um, uh, our David Piddle. I'm sure many of you know um, Dave. He is um, he had a history at Consumers Union and was actually one of the first uh, CPSC commissioners back in the 1970s, and has been a very active consumer advocate since then. Uh, Kitty Pilars. Uh, who has spent many, many years at Fisher Price and is recognized as one of the premier experts uh, with regard to toy and juvenile product safety. Uh, and Alan Schoem, who spent time as both the general counsel and the head of compliance at CPSC and now is in private law practice. So uh, between the four of us, we have well over 100 years of product safety experience. And, and what, we, uh, uh, what we're there to do is to maintain the integrity of the program and also bring a practitioner's view. Um, because we have partnered with the uh, Emerson Leadership Institute at St. Louis University, um, they bring um, academic expertise. We feel that CPSCS brings uh, the practitioner expertise to the process. And we feel that that, that blended um, product is much, much better than it would be individually from either group. So as I said, the function of CPSCS is to ensure the integrity of the certification and testing processes. Um, we work with the Chaffetz School of Business to review and approve the curriculum. Uh, we also review test questions from a practitioner perspective to reduce any ambiguity and ensure there's only one correct answer to those questions um, to make sure that there isn't any confusion on the part of those who are taking the exam. And we also review and approve any requests for accommodations, deferral of completion, et cetera. We understand that people who are uh, entering this program have day jobs and sometimes uh, business needs uh, take precedence. Uh, for instance, uh, we've had people who um, had unexpected uh, international travel. And so they requested to defer uh, completing their certification process until the following class. And, and we did grant that. So uh, there is a, a review process if um, for, a, um, for any good reason that, that you're not able to complete that, CPSCS would review that and, and potentially approve it. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Beth Ann, who's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the Emerson Leadership Institute uh, within the Chaffetz School of Business at St. Louis University, and she can talk about the, uh, the academic piece of the program. Uh, take it away, Beth Ann. All right, thank you so much, Al. Uh, hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to participate on today's webinar with my friends and leaders in product safety. Uh, I am Beth Ann Yakabu, as Al mentioned, and I'm the Executive Director of the Emerson Leadership Institute. Uh, and just to give you uh, a little background about us, uh, the Emerson Leadership Institute is one of the centers of distinction in the Richard A. Schaefer School of Business here at St. Louis U. Uh, our mission is to develop and deliver professional training programs that shape and enable ethical leaders. And we are proud that our institute is a product of St. Louis University, uh, an institution with a rich 200 year history, ranked among the top 100 universities nationally, and the only higher ed institution providing professional product safety education uh, to the industry. Uh, our involvement in the field stretches back over 10 years or so, as uh, John mentioned earlier in his, um, in his introduction. Uh, we developed uh, career uh, development courses for professionals in the industry, um, and many of you listening may uh, be aware of them or even graduates of the product safety certificate courses um, that we created that enhance the skills and knowledge of product safety managers. The Consumer Product Safety Professional Certification Program takes that engagement to the next level because it certifies the knowledge and experience level of high-level product safety leaders. The Emerson Leadership Institute in cooperation with ADK Information Services is excited to be a partner in the design, development, and administration of the program. So now I'd like to share some highlights of the program. Uh, it was established with 
three primary objectives in mind. Uh, first, to provide a path for professional growth and leadership in the field, to establish a formal program that would allow individuals to demonstrate their mastery of a product safety system, and third, to provide a meaningful educational experience that will be recognized by peers, employers, and the community. And that lead, leads me to the primary benefit of the program, which is the ability to earn the industry-recognized designation of Certified Product Safety Professional, or CPSP. The CPSP designation will provide expanded opportunities within the product safety field, both in your current organization and across the global product safety arena. It also creates for the participants an expanded network of peers and industry leaders, which is beneficial for learning and sharing of best practices across companies. So when we look at the format, um, going back one slide, going back to the previous slide, thank you. Uh, so when we look at the format of the program, it is hybrid in, in its model, uh, comprised of both on-site workshops and a webinar series. The opening workshop this year will take place on March 11th and 12th, right here at St. Louis University. And then afterwards, we conduct a weekly webinar series that will run from April through June. The program then concludes with a closing workshop on June 24th and 25th, at which time the participants will return to St. Louis University for a culminating presentation that revisits the topic of culture and its impact throughout the product safety system. Participants finish out the program by sitting for the certification examination, which is comprised of both multiple choice and essay questions. And the participants will present their capstone project. And this consists of a case study that they develop, which outlines in depth the solution to a product safety dilemma or describes an opportunity in the uh, product safety arena for their organization. The case study will be presented to a panel of experts who will meet individually with each candidate during the closing two-day workshop, um, which again is here at SLU. Okay, next slide please. All right, thank you. So as we look at the scope of the program, it covers five areas of knowledge. Um, and these areas, these pillars were determined by a committee convened by SPSP um, that was made up of 12 high-level professionals in the product safety industry. They performed a comprehensive review of the product safety framework and then syn synthesized it into these five um, typical responsibility areas. And so as you can see there on the screen, that the five are um, culture, and its relationship to product safety in a consumer product company, uh, related government agencies and related uh, service providers, outside service providers. Uh, the second area is product safety assurance, including areas such as risk assessment, risk tolerance, and technical issues associated with the design, manufacturing, and distribution of consumer products. The third area is the regulatory compliance area, which is primarily but not exclusively within the U.S. marketplace. Fourth is incident management and the development of consumer database reports and information about incidents involving injuries and or deaths associated with products covered by a company. And then lastly, uh, we have the product recall and withdra uh, withdrawal area, including notification, reporting, and management. So next steps, um, as we look at what the eligibility requirements are, uh, candidates must possess either a minimum of 10 years of product safety work experience or seven years of experience accompanied by a related a bachelor's degree from an accredited university. Candidates must hold a position considered uh, professional in nature, and they must devote at least 50% um, of their jobs uh, in the product safety uh, area. So uh, that could be uh, associated with the design and management 
of a system, um, of a product safety system. The admissions committee will also look at a breadth of professional safety, uh, professional product safety duties, such as analysis, design, investigation, planning, administration, and communication. Uh, individuals may work in either private industry or the government sector or um, in a nonprofit organization. Uh, I mentioned earlier uh, the admissions committee. It is comprised of uh, product safety practitioners from industry as well as university administration. And they are responsible for reviewing all the applications and issuing final uh, admission decisions. So our deadline, uh, as we look at uh, the, the next part there, um, actually registration has begun and enrollment is on a rolling basis. Seats are filling up uh, uh, and in order to uh, make sure that we have a strong and uh, intimate peer network, we are limiting the cohort to 15 members. Uh, we will continue to accept applications through February 26th unless all the spaces fill up before then. And so the, where you go to, um, to pull the uh, application or registration information is uh, at eli.slu.edu, and you would enter that into the, uh, the window uh, without the www piece. And um, once you arrive at the Emerson Leadership Institute's page, you'll just click on certificate programs and then you'll see the uh, Consumer Product Safety Professional Certification Program listed there. I've also included my uh, contact information. So if you have any problems, um, that is my direct line, then you're more than welcome to go either call or email me. I've included my email address there as well. And uh, as you'll see there on the screen, uh, that is a picture of our uh, 2019 inaugural class. We are very proud and excited to present uh, at the ICFASO conference this year, our graduates who have earned their designation. If you're planning to attend the conference, by the way, we hope that you can join us on Tuesday at 9.30 uh, for the ceremony and the uh, panel discussion that we've planned. Now I'd like to hand it over to Melissa Karens, one of our two graduates who will share their personal experiences with you today. Melissa? Are you still on mute? My background, my motivation um, to obtain the certification, and some benefits that I've experienced from attending and graduating the program. I've been working in the legal field as a paralegal for approximately 18 years. I've been with 3M Company for the past 10 years, supporting all the consumer business uh, brands that you can see um, at the bottom of the slide. Um, I've been supporting the, the brands for those 10 years on product representation and advertising mainly. Um, and then for about the past eight years, I've really focused more in on product safety. In this role, I help the teams assess product complaints and product quality or safety concerns from first identifying the issue through potential regulatory reporting, risk assessments, reverse logistics uh, that are involved with product withdrawals and recalls. Through my work, um, I had motivation to get a deeper understanding in some of the subject matter areas surrounding product safety. And when I was doing that, I was speaking with my manager who had um, heard through ICSISO a couple of years prior about this program. And so when we were looking for deeper expertise, I started researching the program and I was right on the verge of the eligibility requirements. And so I thought I'd, I'd take a shot. Um, and thankfully I was accepted into the program and graduated this past year. Um, given the fact that I work in legal affairs um, I attend a lot of meetings with attorneys and I, I'm the consumer product safety subject matter expert for the company. It, it was very hard to distinguish between what the attorney was doing in the room and what I was doing in the room. And so I was really looking for a little bit more credibility to be established through the program. Uh, and I will say that that is one of the key benefits that I've seen already. There's a lot more clarity brought to my role within the company through the certification. I also think that bench Marking 
with the classmates as well as uh, the product safety professionals in the program is extremely valuable. Understanding that it's such a small group and within that small group, everyone in that program had a different role and they brought a different perspective to the conversations, to um, all aspects of product safety that we were talking about. And I will say it was so valuable to speak to these peers and benchmark to understand where we may have the ability to improve processes, but also where other companies are struggling and maybe we're struggling in that same way and understanding what some of the struggles are across the industry to figure out how we can potentially um, help lessen any of the confusion there, help identify those gaps for process improvements going forward. And along that same line, the networking through the program was extremely valuable to me specifically. I felt fairly disconnected from the product safety world. I've been attending ICFSO and other product safety conferences for years, um, but didn't really feel connected to the product safety environment outside of the company. And I found networking to be extremely, extremely valuable. Um, I feel much more connected as a result of the program, and I know that's only going to continue. Finally, not only is it encouraged, but it's expected that graduates of the program continue to be advocates for and leaders in the product safety field. I've had the opportunity to connect 3M with another participating company in the program to benchmark on keeping up with the ever-changing regulatory landscape. I'm participating in this panel today, and I will be a part of that panel at ICFSO that Bethany Ann mentioned in February. And I think the opportunities as a result of graduating from the program are only just beginning as well. I'll leave you with just a couple high level tips uh, from attending the program. I think the structure really lends itself nicely to those who attend from a distance with only two in-person required visits. That being said, the weekly webinars are extremely valuable, not only to connect uh, with your classmates, but also with other product safety experts in the field with a live Q&A. It's really important to stay engaged throughout the entire process uh, to make sure that you're successful throughout the program. The program qualifications are also extremely important. To have an understanding of the basics of consumer product safety is a must to succeed and really capitalize on those benchmarking and networking opportunities. With that, I'm gonna hand it off to my classmate, Sheila Gottschalk at Hallmark. Thank you, Melissa. I'm gonna give you a little of my background. I've been with Hallmark for over 40 years. The last 18 plus have been in various quality and compliance roles. I currently manage a team of safety professionals that support Hallmark's 3D product, which includes ornaments, toys, plush, apparel, and home decor. My team and I work end to end. We're present during product development where we're responsible for identifying potential safety issues and concerns. We follow the product through production and safety testing. We evaluate product for any end of life concerns or special handling needs. I am responsible for the growth and development of my team as safety professionals. I've been an attendee and advocate for the training courses offered through ADK and St. Louis University that you've heard several speak about. I've sent my entire staff through them, either the beginning, advanced, and in some cases, both classes. I recognized the value of these courses, but believe there needed to be something more advanced. I was part of the founding group that John mentioned earlier. The vice president of my product integrity organization and I believed in the value of a university level program so much that it was determined I should be in the inaugural class. I resigned as, pre as president of SPSP so I could attend. Being certified has many benefits. Today's work environment is fast paced and ever changing. Employee turnover and changes in our business partners are constant. Credibility with my staff and my organization is critical. When I'm providing advice or direction, it must be taken seriously. When training my staff, they need to have confidence in my knowledge and abilities. I came into the course with a strong understanding of product safety throughout the stages of product development. The certification course includes a broader learning based on the five pillars. I was familiar with all five, but would not have considered myself strong in some of the pillars. I left the course stronger in all areas, not just those, not just those I knew well already. The material is current and relevant to any safety professional. All attendees will grow and learn.
As I develop my staff, I'm constantly looking for those interested in growing and advancing to the next level within our product integrity area. Who, basically, who's the next person that's going to sit in my chair? My company is beginning to see an abundance of retirement probable safety professionals. Almost 50% of my area will meet this definition by the end of this year, and several are expected to retire within two years. This course is a great tool for employees looking to move to, into leadership roles. I can also find potential talent to recruit through the network opportunities. Other benefits found through networking, including finding subject matter expert contacts. I've reached out on a few occasions for advice. I mentioned the retirement probable condition at my company. I am one of the people in that group. My timeline is beyond two years, but not so far away I don't think about what retirement will be like. Earning the certified safety professional designation could enable me to move into a consultant role. Leadership opportunities from earning this certification and being part of the SPSP continue to grow. I participated in this webinar, written articles for publication, and moderated or participated in sessions on a panel at Exisode last year and will again this year. I will also leave you with a few personal comments about my experience with the course. The course is intense. There's a lot of in information presented. The instructors are leaders in their field. Plan your time and study throughout the course. Don't wait until the end to try and cram, but ensure you do prepare for the test. Connect with fellow classmates. They're a great resource for information or stress relief. Thank you. I think at this time we're going to open it up for any questions that, that you may have for any of us. Hi, thank you. We have a couple of questions here. The first one is, how many years of experience do you recommend before pursuing certification? Okay, this is Beth Ann. I'll take that question. So the eligibility requirements for the certification program are um, a minimum of seven, and if you have at least seven and a, a bachelor's degree uh, from an accredited university, then uh, you will um, qualify for the educational part, um, the educational requirement for the, the program. And this is Ms. Sheila. Can, go ahead, Al. Yeah, I was just going to uh, add a little to what Beth Ann said. I, I, I think, you know, once, uh, assuming you meet the minimum requirements for admission to the certification program, um, I think a lot of it depends on, on what, um, what roles you have held and what role you hold now, and also where you think you're going to be going in the future or where you'd like to go. Um, it, it um, you know, a lot of it depends on the individual feeling that they are ready to take on this challenge. Um, and so it, it, it may vary uh, depending on, uh, again, the individual and the roles that they've held or want to hold. What, one of the comments I was going to make, this is Sheila, is we do have the practice test out there. I think that that is a great tool for assessing where you are. Um, it does two things. It can help you understand where you need to concentrate your efforts as you take the course, as well as give you a gauge on, am I ready? Wonderful. Next question. What is the honest weekly time commitment for success in the coursework? <clears throat> Melissa, I think that falls to you and I. <laughs> um, I'm going to, this is Sheila again, and I, I know I would say one to two hours for sure as I was working more and more on the capstone, I, it probably went up and then the week before the exam, it probably went up even more. There were some days that I know I studied four hours. I was working on, the, on studying and then finalizing and tweaking the capstone. Great. Can you give me an example of an exam question? That's probably to Melissa or Sheila. Uh, <laughs> to Melissa, I cannot. I, I actually, but I, I really do think I would direct you to head back out to the to the website and take the practice exam. That those the the questions out there are very reflective of what we took on the test. Melissa, I, I don't know if you're, you're having trouble, but I don't know if you have, if you can remember any of the questions. 
Can you hear me? This is Melissa. Are you able to hear my audio? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Sorry about that. It must have been disconnected for a second. Um, I don't have an example question, but I do. Uh, I do agree with Sheila to to look at those examples because they are right on. They're exactly what you'll see on the exam. Um, I will say from the time commitment, from my experience, if I were to go back, <laughs> I would definitely commit um, at least one to three hours during the week to just really understand the content from that week because the time commitment at the end on the capstone as well as preparing for the exam is going to increase. So the more you can spread it out, the better. And, and I would also mention, this is Al, I would also mention the, the, the questions are, uh, for the exam portion are multiple choice. Um, an example I believe I remember is, uh, under what conditions um, are you required to report to the CPSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, um, if you, under Section 15B of the Consumer Product Safety Act? Um, and then you would have four choices and you would obviously pick the best choice of those four. Wonderful. Um, I have another question. Can Melissa and Sheila describe their capstone projects? Sure, so this is Melissa. For the capstone project, you are provided um, a, a scenario. And so for, for our capstone project, um, we were the manufacturer of a textile. Um, and, and in that scenario, we were talking about the flammability uh, fabric sack. And, and, and you really have to walk through, you have a scenario at a company and you um, potentially are out of compliance with a regulation that is under the CPSC's jurisdiction and you need to walk through from start to finish all of the analysis uh, that goes through uh, any sort of product safety analysis at a company. And then um, when you do come to the final workshop, your presentation is really a presentation that you would give to a leadership team with a recommendation on next steps. Wonderful. Um, for Melissa, what are some specifics of what you learned from this course that you did not know from your years in legal and working in product safety at 3M? <laughs> One of the things that I took away from this that I took back and really am continuing to work on at the company is the entire risk assessment process and how much is involved in that um, and how we can do better. Um, being in legal, I had a lot of strengths in the regulatory piece. Um, the culture piece was extremely interesting and, and I took a lot of those learning back, learnings back as well too, but I, the risk assessment and how everything is built on the risk assessment and the different um, perspectives and aspects that you have to take into consideration. There's an entire section on that and that was extremely useful and, and still is today. Wonderful. Do you know where we can find the practice exams? Um, yeah, I know. this is John. I know where you can find them. So if you go to the productsafetyprofessionals.org a website and that's on that last slide there and then if you go under education and training uh, under the top bar there and then you click on certification there you will see in that second link uh, program examination sample questions and there's 20 sample questions there uh, for review great so what happens if you don't pass the test the first time Al or Bethann, do you want to take that one? Sorry, I, I, I was muted. I was talking. I didn't realize I was muted. Pardon me. Uh, yes, I'll take that. Um, so if, if you unfortunately don't pass it on the first round, you will have an opportunity to retake the test. Um, you have a period of uh, six months after um, the first try to retry. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, let's see if we have any more questions. 
uh, what is the cost of the program and are there scholarships available? Okay, I'll, I'll answer that as well. This is Beth Ann again. Uh, the, the full cost of the tuition is uh, $5,400 per student. However, SPSP members will receive a discount of $300. So um, a SPSP member would pay $5,100 for the program. Are there scholarships available? The, um, the SPSP membership would be the, the opportunity for um, a discount. Okay. At this time, no scholarships. Okay. Uh, what percent of your first class of participants passed the exam on the first try? That is a great question. Okay, so this is Beth Ann again. <laughs> and uh, we had uh, a, a really successful uh, first class, and 75% uh, of our group passed it the first time around. Great. Um, how much weight does the final exam and capstone project each have for award of certificate? Well, in order to receive your certificate, the designation, um, you have to pass both, um, and they're equally weighted. Are there requirements to maintain the certification? Yes, and those um, those would be um, within the uh, the following years. You would have several years to continue. Um, to maintain, to take courses that would, um, that would count toward the maintenance of your program. And, and I'll uh, this add is... to that a little too. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, uh, sorry, Al. Um, no, go ahead, John. The website in that same area where the, you'll find the examination sample questions, um, at the bottom there, there's a link to the certification maintenance program which details out all the different things that are needed to maintain your certification. Yeah. And I, I was going to add that the certification is good for, I believe, five years. Is that where we landed, John? Um, yes. And um, so during that five years, you can either, uh, at the end of those five years, you would need to recertify. And you can do that by either taking the exam again, um, you know, if you really are a glutton for, for, for going through the process again. Um, but uh, for most people, what will happen is you'll need to keep a certification log during those five years and you get a various, uh, you get various credits for um, a certain activities, uh, classes, et cetera, uh, that will count toward the recertification uh, number of points that you would need. Okay, um, what is covered in international product safety management? Um, if I understand the question correctly, this is Al again, um, the, uh, the program is weighted heavily toward the U.S. Uh, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of focus on U.S. consumer product safety law. Uh, there are some mentions of international uh, product safety um, requirements, but uh, as I said, the, the primary focus is for the U.S. at this point. Uh, I think there is a, um, you know, if there is enough demand, I think we have already have had initial conversations about whether um, there is a, an add-on um, that might be developed for this program, um, you know, which covers some of the international requirements, but uh, not, uh, not at this point. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is John again. Um, our goal for SPSP is to be a global organization and to allow the education and leadership in all areas internationally as well. But to start the program on its inaugural state, it's really just focused more so on US as this was much of the expertise that just went into this initial uh, push for the program. And once we found that the concentrating on US, even though international is a little bit a part of it, once we found this is successful, then we see that, yeah, like Al said, there is a demand for this and we can go further and we can start to reach out to further experts and globalize even more. But the goal is to globalize the program, but at this time, it's mostly US driven. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what, percent, what percentage of your first class of participants passed the capstone presentation, last presentation? What happens if that is not passed? So again, we had about 75% uh, uh, success rate the first go round. Um, so the um, if the capstone is not completely uh, successfully completed, then again, there will be um, an opportunity to revisit that and represent. Okay, uh, what type of... What types of companies and industries are in a typical class? Do we have anyone that wants to answer that? I, this is Sheila. I don't know that, um, I know I can remember a few of my classmates where they were, but I don't know that I remember them all. Uh, but we had we had some that represented what I would call manufacturing, um, retail, and I, Melissa, can yeah. you think of? <laughs> yeah, we had retailers and manufacturers. We had um, children's products. We had electronics. We had um, you, you saw the brands that I had you know, general consumer goods. It was kind of all over the map, which is what really made it helpful as well. Yeah, chemical yeah, product. Mm -hmm. Chemical, yep. Okay, is there a requirement to maintain certification year by year? Uh, not necessarily year by year. It would be uh, a five-year recertification. But like Al said, throughout years zero to five, you would want to be keeping up with it and keeping your credits and keeping a log. I don't think you would want to wait until that final year or final month before the certification expires uh, to try to gather all these other types of classes and courses and papers and things you may need to keep your certification. So you have five years to continue that process and that's what we would encourage is you continue on throughout those years and maintain the certification and I would call it more of a maintenance of the certification as opposed to recertifying. Wonderful, wonderful. So I think that was all the questions that were sent today. If there are any questions that come through, you can send them via email and we can get them to our presenters. But thank you so much to our presenters today. And thank you to all, of, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. The webinar recording will be available on our website by the end of this week. And for those of you who have submitted questions, please watch your email for responses to those we were not able to address during the presentation. In addition, please watch for announcements about upcoming webinars and SPSP webinar series. Thank you so much and everyone have a wonderful day.